Joss, your uh, superhero comics, comic books of all stripes, very important to you. Um, and now you are now directing probably one of the most eagerly anticipated superhero movies ever, The Avengers. Um, is that true? That is, that is, that is, that is not, not, not an official thing. Um, so, uh, because I think Marvel couldn't afford like a breast release. So can I just make that an official thing? I'm directing The Avengers. It's just a gig, you know? <laughs> were the Avengers a big part of your comic book reading when you were a kid? Uh, yeah, they were one of the first books when George Perez was drawing them. They're on Counter Earth. This was a big deal for me, yeah. Squadron Supreme, I'm just saying. How did the comic book things uh, happen for you? I mean, like, how did you start uh, falling in love with them? And uh... um, This actually, in a roundabout way, because my dad was the head writer of the Electric Company. They were going to do Spidey. They were going to do Spidey stories. So he came home with a bunch of Sp old Spider-Man comics when I was about nine. And, uh, you know, just, sure, hand your son meth. That's great. There you go. That was it. Never look back. And that's how the, the, the comic book uh, yeah, loved it. So. And what, what were sort of like the, the, the seminal kind of like superhero stories of your youth? You know, there's so many that, uh, you know, it's going to, it would take forever. But I'm just going to go with the, uh, actually, uh, the Avengers annual and the Thing 2-in-1 annual that Jim Starlin did with the Death of Warlock. Nice. That was, for me, the beginning of grown-up comics. That is the most underrated, overlooked uh, piece, I think, in the whole Marvel Universe. JJ, were you into, like, superhero comics at all? Is that, like, kind of a, a big touch-up uh, for you? I, I was, uh, not as much as, uh, as Josh, but, you know, I worked at a comic book store when I was a kid. One of the first jobs I had, and I was like... You know, just 15 years old, and I got a job, and in this store in LA, and the guy, the first day on the job, the guy who's a really weird dude who owned the store, uh, he, I I don't know what he was on, but he gave me the keys, and he's like, I'll, I'll be back, cause I'll see you tomorrow, and he left, and I was like alone in the store with the keys. I, he didn't even tell me how to lock the the door, so uh, I kind of wanted to steal some of the older Spidey books that were there, and I, I didn't do it. I probably, you know, should have done it. But, uh, so I, I, I would read books, you know, there, and I got into it, but I was never into it as much. I was more, like, into the Twilight Zone and more uh, TVs and, TV and movie stuff. At one point, you did write a script for a Superman movie. Um, it didn't get um, made. But... It's very well received. <laughs> <laughs> but is that a genre that you would be interested in returning to, like uh, superheroes, or is that... Sure, yeah, of course, sure. I'd, I'd be open to anything. For sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, Joss, is it too early to talk about kind of like what your take is on, on, on the Avengers? Uh, even if you could just sum it up in a line? Or... I have to have a take? Yeah. Can I just... it, it, it's helpful when you're a director to have a kind of a good take on the Okay. Um, it is a little early. Um, you know, we're, it's, it's, I am still writing an outline. I'm still at the very, you know, I'm still in that stage of reworking it, reworking it, reworking it. Um, I will say that the thing that I love about it, the thing that made me excited to do it was just how completely counterintuitive it is. It makes no sense. These people should not even be in the same room, let alone on the same team. And that, to me, is the very definition of family. <laughs> JJ, you grew up uh, making uh, films on the Super 8 camera. You also grew up loving the films of Steven Spielberg. And now you are making a movie called Super 8 with Steven Spielberg. And is that like a total coincidence? Is it a coincidence? Is that a coincidence? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's sort of a, a dream come true, honestly. Um, the, the strange thing, this is the, um, a weird story. Uh, when I was 16 years old, Matt Reeves uh, and I, Matt directed Cloverfield, and we, we created uh, Felicity together. Matt and I went to Super 8 Film Festival in, in L.A., and uh, the LA Times wrote a story about it that came out the, the next day. And we got a phone call that day from Steven Spielberg's assistant, who at the time was Kathy Kennedy. And she said, uh, Steven made films when he was your age, and they're damaged. The splices are sort of coming off, the little tape splices. Would you guys be interested in repairing them? And Matt and I were like, yeah, we got finals, but we could 
probably also repair Steven Spielberg's movies that he made. <laughs> and they said, oh, great, we'll, we'll drop them off. So someone comes and drops off uh, these two original films, Firelight and Escape to Nowhere, that Steven Spielberg made when he was a kid. And these are the original, there are no copies, these are the original movies. And, we, and it says on the film, which of course we watched them, it says written and directed by Steve Spielberg. And I'm like, Matt, we must take a frame of this. We have to. And he's like, no, no, we can't do that, they'll know. So we didn't steal it. And uh, anyway, a lot of almost theft in my childhood. Uh, so we repaired these movies, and they were shot on regular eight, not super eight, and we like peeled off every splice and put it back on. And it was just watching these movies that he made, it was insane, and it was just so inspiring. And uh, I had no idea why this was happening. It felt like a complete joke. Because isn't there a building somewhere at Universal that's designed to house the team that restores Steven Spielberg's films that he made when he was a kid? So we, were, we, were, we repair these movies, and they pick them up. They give us $300, and that's when I knew why they had us do it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so years later, I, this is a couple years ago, I called uh, Steven, and I said, I have an idea for a movie called Super 8. And I just sort of pitched him. And, he was very excited about it because I knew, having, in a weird way, worked on the, those movies, you know, uh, I had a sense of sort of what he had done when he was a kid. What can you say about Super 8? Is, it a little, is this also a case a little too soon, or can you say I, it's, I think it's, it's way too early. I mean, I, I, I would love to, you know, show you footage, but we haven't shot any. Um, uh, yeah, we're, you know, my favorite thing about the movie, though, is that someone, uh, you know, had, will go to the theater and see the trailer and hopefully say, oh my god, that looks bitchin', and have no idea they're starring in it. Yeah. The movie. So we're, we're shooting in September, we haven't shot the movie yet. Now what has been the collaboration like been with Steven so far? I mean, has that It's been unbelievable, fun? it really is uh, surreal, and because there is a genre element to the movie, uh, it's impossible to work with him and not constantly reference the work he's done, and you don't want to sound like you're being a sycophant, but um, it, 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 it's been incredible, He's he's been beyond helpful, and uh, the, the movie is, I think, very much in the spirit of, uh, of some of the, the Amblin films that, uh, that, that he made years ago. So it, it's, it's a, it is a dream come true, and I, I couldn't imagine working on something that was more uh, sort of personal and also kind of uh, hyper-real, you know, because it's not like uh, the movie is some kind of autobiography, but there's a lot of stuff in it that feels very personal. Will a film called Super 8 be in 3D? No. No. Very interesting. <laughs>